what we're going to be going over here is linear regression and we're going to be checking for serial correlation here on our residual errors. Now when we do a linear regression we assume we have independence here of our residuals but really we should be testing for that independence and we test it through uh, a Durbin Watson test that we're going to be looking at in this case. Okay so what I've done here I've plotted 12 different data points here uh, along our x-axis that would be in our independent variable and then along our y-axis was our dependent variable. And I've, uh, using some software I've calculated a regression line here. But uh, this uh, regression uh, line that we have here shown by y here, our independent variable depends on x and then there's a slope coefficient here and then the y-intercept here where the y, uh, where an x is equal to zero, we have uh, the slope of the line here crosses our y-axis in this case at 300. But what we've done here and looking for this correlation, it's all built on the sum of, sum of the squit residual errors here. So it's really the difference between uh, looking at these 12 different data points here. We actually look at uh, whatever the actual y is here and the predicted y. We look at that difference, we square it, and then we sum it along here. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to minimize that the residuals that we squared here. So what we've done here, just to understand what we're done, we take our actual y's here, and then we subtract from it the predicted y here based on our line equation that we have here. That difference, square it, sum it, we come up with the residuals here, and we're trying to minimize that residuals by fitting this line through here. But if we have any correlation, this residual line that we have here, this regression line, may not be accurate here. So let's go and let's talk about what we're talking about, serial correlation. So this is the case here with serial correlation. You can either have positive serial correlation or you can have negative serial correlation or some combination of it here. So when we're talking about uh, positive serial correlation, we're going to have a pattern that would be looking like this. So we've got our green fitted line here and then our pattern, our data. You can actually lay it out here in a graph and you can look at it here and you can see how it changes here. You see it's sort of a sinusoidal curve going up, could be going down. But nonetheless, you're going to come up with some pattern where plus, 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 increases, increase, increases, and then you might have some minus, 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 like de decreases and decreases and decreases and then alternating. A bunch of plus, plus, pluses, minus, minus, minuses, and plus, plus, pluses, and so forth here. But we went up you can visually look at it and see it if it's very distinct here when you lay out your graph but that's not all the case always the case so we want to check for it using some uh, statistics here we're going to use that Durbin Watson test and then for our negative serial correlation and then you're just having alternated plus minus plus minus so forth all you have alternating pattern you have an increase decrease increase decrease increase decrease and so forth so that's what we talk about negative serial correlation again the lines could be sloping down as well here but what you want is a random pattern here. You don't want this uh, these uh, serial correlation either as a positive or as a negative serial correlation because it's going to uh, that equation that we calculated here, this y predicted y here based on some slope times our uh, independent variable x based on that y intercept. It would not be accurate if we have any correlation here. So this is what would happen here. If the residuals or these devi deviations here are serial cor correlated, either plus or minus here, first off, the estimated regression of the coefficients here would not be minimized. That uh, residual sum of squares wouldn't be minimized. And then also, if you look at the mean square here, mean squares, they may, they may be underestimated in our variance error here when you look at ANOVA. And then your computed standard error, your parameter would be underestimated here. So coming up with, if you got this, uh, this correlation, the line that you figured would not be accurate. Okay, so let's go and let's look at the Durbin-Watson test here. Okay, so this is very simple. The Durbin-Watson test, just looking at it in terms of Excel here, we're going to just look at how we set that up here. So what you're going to do here, you're going to, looking at our residuals here first, that is we run with our Excel, we've run that regression analysis and we come up with our residuals here, those R squared. These aren't the squared, but these are the residuals that the ch looking at our actual Y versus our predicted Y in this case here. So what you do with the Durbin-Watson test, let's just go through it. First off, you take this equal sum, S-U-M here, X, M-Y, and then two here. Make sure you get that in properly here. 
And that's really taking the sum of the squares of differences of corresponding values of two different arrays here. Okay, so let's just look at this this first fun uh, this first function here first for our Excel here. So what you can enter is in this case, let's look at our regression here just on our column A here. We have those 12 different points here. So you'd start out with your first point here. You take A2 here, this A, you, you from your second row down to your 12th row, showing in these arrows here. You put it in there, A2, semi, or colon to A12, and then you have a comma here. And then the next one you have to put in your next array here, actually go from A1 to A11. Okay, so that's showing as our B figure here. Our first one here was showing as our A element. So you got to put that in. And then you have your division sign here, your slash. And then you do a sum of squares. So S-U-M, S-Q. And then you're doing it over that the total, uh, re, uh, total residuals, A1 to A12, all the way down here from A1 to A12. Put it in there, hit your enter key, and you're going to come up with a Durbin-Watson number here. And in the case of the numbers I looked at here on our regression, it's 2.053422 here. So really what this Durbin-Watson is telling us here, and we'll just look at it from a very basic here. There's, so you're going to have our serial correlation with your Durbin-Watson test. We could have come up with numbers, in this case, uh, numbers from anywhere from 0 to 4 here. Our number happens to be 2 here. So what we're, we've done here, if we had a, a value here that was less than two and was approaching zero here, we, this is what represents positive correlation. That was that sinusoidal plus, 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 minus, minus, minus. So if we, when we approach zero here, closer we get to zero, the more serial correlation we have as positive here. So you'd like to get as close as you can here to your two value, that's say you have no serial correlation and then your regression would be accurate for that line equation we have. And then if we go uh, from two to four here, this is negative correlation. The more closer you get to four here, you have a negative correlation. That's that alternating deal here. So just run your simple test here and then come up with your Durbin-Watson number and make the comparison. See if it's close to zero or if it's approaching zero here or if it's approaching four here. So what you really want to do is you want to get something as close as you can to zero here to make, and then you're assured that your regression line is accurate here. Now, this is just the very basics here for a zero cor correlation for durbin wasson There's all kinds of tables you're doing depending on what you're doing, different regressions for different, uh, if you have any multiple regressions and so forth. So you have to really check some tables. There's 1%, 2.55%, and so forth. And you see, you have to check your confidence limits, your sample size, and so forth here. Nonetheless, here, I've just shown an example where we, we're using from 0 to 4 here, that Durbin Watson. And really, that's where it runs here, but it depends on your samples and so forth. You want to get, in this case, as close as you can to 2. So if you start approaching, moving up here to 3, to 4, you get less and less, and less confidence in your regression line here. If you're either moving uh, from 2 to 4 in the negative direction here, or from uh, 2 to 0 here in a positive direction. So they just work as you positive, you're approaching 0. Negative, you're approaching that other number here. OK, so that's your basic uh, Durbin-Watson test here. OK, so then let's go down here. And let's just, we've done a plot here for those serial correlation of the residuals. You might want to do a plot here. And you really, we're looking at on the plot here. You could look at it on the graph, but it gives you an idea. These are the actual residual values that I plotted out for those 12 different data points. And what you want is a random pattern of independence. Now, this doesn't look like it's exactly random here. It looks like it might have a little of that negative correlation where it's going from plus, minus, plus, minus, and so forth. But you can see here, when you get down to this point here, you, you go down, it's not all, it would have, it didn't always go up, it went down a little bit here. And then you can see it here, it went also down a little bit here. So it has a random pattern. Our Durbin Watson come up with a 2.53 here. And really, that's saying we have no correlation here. But really, you're looking for those residuals, and you'd like see how they, uh, with those residuals here, when we fitted those lines here, everything above the line here, we add up all our residuals above our line here. Well, you add up all your residuals, period, and you you should come up with you'll come up with a zero value here when you fitted that line in here. But nonetheless, you want to you might want to plot them looking at it and you look at for a random pattern or the independence of your residuals here. Okay. So that's just plotting out our 
uh, uh, residuals themselves here to see if we have some serial correlation here. Then we have standardized residuals. You might want to look at that. And that I'm just showing from minus three sigma to plus three sigma, uh, different sigmas or standard, standard, standards here for our standard deviations for our residuals. And that's simply just taking each of those residuals You'd have to figure out their standard deviation, which I run here with the Excel. It was 170 here, standard deviation. You divide that into each of your residuals here, and you're going to come up with the standardized residuals here. So all you're doing is looking at how many standard deviations it is from your mean value here of your residuals. And in our case, it looks pretty good here. We have a swing. We're staying within one standard deviation. You can see it here. So again, what you're doing here is, you know, you've got three standard deviations here, the 99%, two standards here, and then you get down to one standard deviation. So our residuals are staying within one standard deviation. But what you want to do here, you want to look for a normal distribution around the regression line here. That's what you're really looking at here for the standardized residuals and also looking at the range between how they're, uh, how they're, uh, what their range is. Now you could have some outliers here too as well. You could have a one up here at three sigma or one down at three sigma so forth and you also want to be checking for those here for your standardized residuals. I only looked at 12 numbers here or 12 points and I came up with this. Okay so what we want to do here is just sum it up here but look when you're doing that serial correlation we did a Durbin Watson test. There are other tests here, but it just did a simple one with the Excel function here for the Durbin Watson test. And it gives you an idea what you have to look for when you're looking at uh, setting a regression here. You, uh, and you have to really look at, it really should be checking serial correlation to see if you have any positive or negative serial correlation when you're doing a regression analysis to make sure that your regression line is accurate.